Yo, what's going on, world? It's your man, Pat Caesar, Caesar LLC, Mobile Mechanic and Roadside Services. And today, we're going to be checking out this new uh, Harbor Freight Tire Changer. Let's get it in. So, I know y'all seen this over the, the tube, man, trying to figure out whether this thing is worth anything or not. And uh, I got one, and I've been using it pretty religiously. Here it is, right here. Our little Harbor Freight joint. I got to go find the other end of it so we can actually use this. And I give you guys a walk around here to do this. But I'm still working on it. My quality feels like it's going up. So um, what you're going to need here, the, the, this is some of the things that they don't tell you about when it comes to the kit. These right here, tire irons. This is what we use for big semi-tires like this one that I'm using to hold this down because it's supposed to be bolted to the cement. And as you can tell, I got quite a few rims and tires and not a whole lot of space to do this because I do it on the road. Um, this is the Harbor Freight uh, Pittsburgh 24 inch tire iron. I'll put a link somewhere down here below and I think this is a 37 inch. Um, don't know the brand but you're going to need something very heavy duty for this. I guarantee it. I'm going to go a quick walk around here. Uh, don't mind the mess in the background. I just literally bolted this to a pallet that I made. It isn't even a real pallet. It comes with that bar right there that's supposed to be like one of these bars, which is not. Um, a hole down so you can take this off. Come on. And um, bolt the rim to here. You will put this part on the wheel. I'm gonna show you guys. And then this is Oh, your bead breaker. What they don't tell you about this, this right here is a wheel. It is a 14, 185, 65, 14. And this is about as big as you can get without straining yourself. And you can, I think I've done as big as a 16 on here, but I fought, I fought like mad trying to do it. Uh, I've already take, took off the um, valve core and um, it seems like it's about to start raining. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to use this thing. So, of course, first thing you're going to do, take out your valve core. Let this thing uh, take some time to come out. Typically, you want to go around the edges with some type of lubricant because I found that it's extremely hard to do it without it. So let me go get some of that actually what you think it is um this i got this in a antifreeze bottle that i've cleaned but um drill the hole through the top you need tire mounts and lube so you're just gonna go ahead throw some there let it soak all around kind of like you're doing a big truck i just don't have a uh, a hammer Whew. once you're lubed up as you can see i'm making sure the sun's still good here oh you didn't get to see none of that okay do this again Lube it up. You gotta lick it before you stick it, okay? Lube all this up. You wanna get it inside of that bead. Now, the reason why I'm going through this is because this thing gets a lot of flat. Uh, it's kinda hard to use, I'm gonna be honest. It's a little hard to use, but if you do all the proper steps, it makes it work up to a certain rim. I also recommend only using a steel wheel unless you have uh, protectors. And I think like no Mar is the only one who makes protectors for this that goes against aluminum rims. But what you're going to be doing is taking this, going inside of the bead and flipping it over the rim, which is what this is supposed to do, but it does a bad job. You kind of need something that's concave. Right. But once you got that far, got our lube on here, can be dish soap. I use another special ingredient. We're going to break the free baker up. There's a little triangle here that you're going to set on the bead and there's different levels to this i have this adjusted like this because of the last vehicle that i did but you want to get in between the rim and the bead watch your fingers we're going to take it off if you allow it to and let's readjust it I show you around here. I've already bit this thing up. I mean, I use this. I use this pretty religiously, as you can tell. And I 
also don't use it by the rules per se because you're supposed to keep it right on there where that triangle is at. I find it very hard to do so. Okay. That's what's going to usually happen, is that you're not going to be able to properly break that bead. Let me get closer so I can show you guys. Keep this as close as you can. School bus. Get inside, in between the bead of the tire and the lip of the rim. That's what usually happens. So to combat this, show you guys what I do. Now I happen to have a spare silly. And typically I put a brick or something underneath this thing because working at an angle for me has not worked so good. So now it sits a little bit more flush. You go inside of here, eat it in as much as you can. And we're going to relube. Somebody asked me the fastest time I've ever done one of these in. And I told them like 10 minutes a wheel. But if you ever use a real tire machine, uh, uh, electrical with compressed there, you will know it's like you can have it on and off in like 30 seconds versus fighting with these things. has like three settings on here. I want as much leverage as possible so I come all the way out. I can see I'm kind of sweating doing this because it isn't that easy. It's not that easy being cheesy. as I can. It's so much easier with a hammer than using this thing at times. This tire is only like three years old too. So it's not like it's old. Well, it looks like it's been about three minutes. And you see what's going on. This is one of those problems. And this is why you trying to do this on a bigger wheel is almost impossible. Imagine it takes me this long to typically do this. That's my neighbor. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I usually don't have this much trouble, y'all.
I'm gonna go get another hammer. I'll be right back. You might want to chisel it out. And I got a lightweight hammer with me. But what our goal is here is to break this bead. I really, really wish I just had my hammer. Not this hammer, y'all. The hammer that you use. Tired guys are understand. It's the one that you use to break down the big boys. I don't like this every time. another round. Going another round. This is thanks to recording. Jesus Christ. It has been almost four minutes. So, of course, I won't bore you guys with the details. We are still staying tuned for this uh, catastrophe here. So, oh, man.
It looks like the bead is starting to break. That's good. Good. Even better when it just does it. Jesus Christ, the bead just broke y'all, the bead has finally broke. Well, I think you guys have seen all the carnage here. Well, once one side is broke, typically the other side is not as bad. But of course, this being a Harbor Freight joint, it could prove me wrong. Still recording good. Only been eight minutes so far. I'll fast forward through this because uh, it's hell. There we go. Cool. All right. Jesus Christ, you got seen all that. The bead is broke. And believe it or not, that was the easy part. <laughs> so let's get on to the next thing. All right. I'm going to take this out. Now this is little little uh, stud that's in here. And this is supposed to represent... Uh, It's supposed to represent a lug nut, because you want it to stay stationary. You're gonna put this portion, oh, I probably should turn the camera so you guys can see that better. All right, this thing right here, which you can see I've kind of mangled up pretty bad from my excessive use. Not a commercial application, by any means necessary. So, once you put that on there, you got your stud in. When it come back, you get this portion here. Screw it on, screw it on. Come back and get your bar, tighten it up. Now this is where you're gonna wanna make sure uh, you got something super heavy. That's nasty, uh, nasty, it's coming out of the tire. Super heavy duty portion to hold it down because you're gonna start to see it's gonna be moving around. So I got my big semi tire that I had spared laying around. And what you wanna do is take this bead and come over the lip. So a Harbor Freight joint works a little bit better than the other one. And if you have a TPMS sensor, make sure that you got that out of the way. But once you start to pull this back, you want to push down on the rest of it. All right. That's what we basically want to happen. I'm going to do this again with this one so I can show you what's supposed to actually happen. So you would take this. This is your tire iron for this application take this part that's down and put it in and then pull up okay so down portion 
flat portion on the top. Go around, and you're gonna hit. I gotta hit this pretty, pretty hard and hold the uh, pressure because I don't have it bolted down. There you go. Oh, yes. No. <laughs> Now I've caught myself in the gutter a couple times with this thing. It's pretty horrendous. It hurts sometimes. So you be very careful. Or you could just do it the old fashioned style, which is why I have these extra bars. Just pry it in, watch your face. A bit too much. I gotta go over some. This struggle is real, y'all. Oh. This struggle is super real. I cannot make this up even if I wanted to. I have to link my other video. Why are mechanics? Why do they cost so much? That didn't work out. Where's my good bar? Let's go semi tire style. Whew, it's gonna rain. All right, I gotta hurry up. Do the same thing. Never bite off more than you could chew. Damn. Yeah. You probably see me holding on to this other bar pretty pretty religiously, because I don't want this to come back and hit me in the face. And it will. Believe that. And you could lose a tooth, an eye, or much, much more. Alright, about that point, you can take it out. So the top bead is above the rim, and we want to go ahead and release that bottom. I'm not even going to bother to use their equipment, because at this point I'm very aggravated. And I just wanted to be done. Actually, you know what, I lied. But we'll do it. Because now that I got that up, put this one here, and put now put that top part straight in so it doesn't go down i mean if you got tire experience you will get it you know what i'm saying it ain't gonna this will make you appreciate the tire shop machines oh that was in the gut oh yeah that's what i was talking about great oh jesus christ While this is a one man job, yeah, for sure as hell gonna struggle. Oh, yeah, put the bars down. There you go, add it to the collection, baby. Oh, god, okay, let's come on, let's come on, let's have a kind of Jesus moment. That was hellacious, ridiculous. That was a Harbor Freight tire changer machine. Now, I do roadside services and I change tires on the road. And I was using this for a while. As you can probably tell, I don't do that no more. Well, I give you some muscles, 
It could also hurt your stomach and your head and everything else. So, what are we learning about this thing, huh? See this? What What is this? What is this thing? Does it matter? Is it any good? Man. My opinion is going to be, hell no. Hell no. To no, no, no. Hell to no. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, man. Uh, especially the fact that if you have aluminum rims, you are going to destroy them. Uh... I guess I'll try to get a little bit closer to show you what I mean here. Now, I use this on a commercial basis, and as you can see from the tires here, I've done quite a few, like that rim that's on top there that still has the tire on. You don't want to even go that high up. This is a 17, 16, 17, 16, 16, 235, 60, 16, and it is hellacious. I mean, literally, you will, you will die. You, well, you could die. I'm not going to say you actually will die, but you could die because it's horrible. It is horrible. What I've learned from using this machine is that it's not as user-friendly as they say. And I realize a lot of things from Harbor Freight. I got another video that I'm working on now um, that will explain the difference between, like, quality parts. Like, uh, I don't even know who really makes a quality one like this that's mobile. But there's a couple companies that have more parts to it um that make it easier i mean for how much if you can see i change tires uh for not just myself but on the road and i need something that i can depend on if you want this for just like something to play around with in the backyard hey go spend the 30 40 50 bucks or whatever it is but as far as i'm concerned like it's just that's what i think but I will have the follow-up, and I'm going to put a tire back on it to show you guys that, um, well, I'm not just blowing smoke, all right? Um, until next time, I, mean, I think I'm going to kill it with that. I ain't putting a tire on this thing right now. I'm going to cover it back up. I'm going to put this rim somewhere, and I'll figure it out another day. <laughs> but until next time, I mean, like the video. If you like the video, hopefully the information is useful to you. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, Cesarlotto.com, S-E-A-S-A-L-L-A-U-T-O.com. If you guys want some merch, you want some parts, you want stuff that actually works, um, advice, tips, and anything that benefits my fellow man. Until next time, mi gente, mi promundo beneficio. Peace.